Hello, hello. Welcome to this episode of the Rogers Radio Podcast. I am your host, Alyssa Rogers, and today with me, I have another Excite program intern, Mr. Brian Seat. Welcome to the Rogers Radio Podcast. Well, thank you for having me, Alyssa. Yes, you're so welcome. We have enjoyed having you here today. It's the end of your day here, so you've had a very exciting day since this morning of kind of seeing an inside view of Rogers, and I want to get into that a little bit on what it was like today. Tell us about your experience at Rogers. Well, first coming in, everyone was just extremely nice, and the facility is, uh, is first class. I think the community is... Um, very lucky to have you know someone such as you know yourself and your husband yeah. coming in and, and revitalizing you know existing buildings um, yeah. and then just servicing the community so well yeah um, the professionalism that I saw throughout the day oh. and, and, and communication a lot of communication yeah and, and everyone seems really happy and excited to be here <laughs> We are. We're an excited group around here, and uh, you happen to be here on during Spirit Week. Mm-hmm. So you came in and saw it was uh, Throwback Thursday today. So you got to see everyone dressed up in uh, in their throwback wear. And if I had known, I'd worn something from the '80s, I guess, maybe <laughs> the '70s. I don't know. I'm a I'm a '70s child. So. Yes, we should have told you in advance. But yeah, we definitely yeah. have a good time around here, and. I'm excited for you to be here because you are a civics teacher for seventh grade um, at the Halifax County Middle School. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's important for these students that are coming up through the school system to see kind of what the businesses are doing around town and what the opportunities are here in this area. It's extremely um, important that we're able to go back and and let the students know what's available in the community. And, you know, uh, hey, guys and girls, you, you don't have to leave. You can stay here, you know, yeah. you can, can do hands-on work. Because I have a lot of students come to me and say, hey, Mr. C, I want to do this or that, you know, and maybe it, it's a good fit, maybe it's not. And I can say, hey, I've got maybe something else we can, you know, we right. can show you, some hands-on things. Yeah. Right. So you have been to multiple businesses throughout your experience in the Excite program. Yes, ma'am. So I want to kind of highlight the program as a whole because it's the Institute for Advanced Mm -hmm. Learning that um, is hosting this program. And you just told me that they picked 30 educators. Correct. Throughout um, the various counties in the area. And they're going to a bunch of different places. And how has that experience been for you as a whole? Because how many places have you gone to? Today will be the fourth day, fourth. actually. Okay. Um, but as a whole, it's been great because we've seen such a wide spectrum. Yes. Um, and I, I think everyone has been more, um, I guess a, a good way to put it, it's been a little more surprising than, than I thought. You yeah. Know, you, you get in your mind, you think you know what a, a lumber mill is, or you know what a, a plumbing HVAC is business mm-hmm. is or mm-hmm. what have you and then you go oh, wait a minute it's you know technology's changed you know yeah. it, it's not the same old rapper we used to have you know it's a it, it's a different uh different ball game tell me about that a little bit tell us about kind of your background i know you grew up in the area mm-hmm. and, and kind of tell us about that and what led you to teaching what led me to teaching uh and honestly with the textile industry going away i yeah. saw my father um basically lose his job of 38 years mm. um, and there were some choices years ago uh, what do you do right you know and and, and you, you had uh, maybe health care education uh, and of course the trades were here but as I was telling um, the gentleman I rode with this yeah. morning on the service calls basically it was hard to get a job at one point mm. the doors were kind of closed uh, and you know we're just in a different uh, kind of segment now after COVID the baby boomers are retiring so there's a whole new um, set of alternatives right. I think for, right. for the young people in our school system but that's what led me to education it's I said you know I just didn't trust the factories anymore right I just didn't and I said well right. you know for Brian mm-hmm. I have to do something to take care of me to sure. make sure I'm going to have continue to have a job yeah uh, and a little earlier I had grown up in it uh body shop business yeah. and um, didn't really want to pursue that because I like old cars so yeah. after work I was coming home 
oh, I don't want to see an old car. Right. You know, that's, or a car in general. Yeah. But, um, and I do enjoy the, the, the students. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good fit for family time. And um, I, I hear work-life balance a lot. Sure. So teaching school gives you that work-life balance. Sure. But I do feel extremely lucky and fortunate that I've done other things. Yeah. You know, I have worked in the factories. I have worked the night shift and second shift and weekends and that sort of thing. And crawled under houses and painted houses. Right. And a little bit of everything. So I, I feel like I can um, convey to the students, or you know, hey, here's what's here. Or, you know, maybe if they tell me what they've been doing during the summer, you know, I understand. I guess mm -hmm. that's the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. <clears throat> and it's that hard work and putting in the, that time and that effort. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the traditional route. It can be, you know, there are so, so many opportunities all around us. And it doesn't have to be exactly maybe what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Mm. So many things uh, spill over into other things. You know, everything right. is kind of one job I, I had right out of high school. My first job, I was in inventory and drove a forklift. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't believe the number of times that I've looked back and said, oh, wow, you know, that taught me so much about whatever we're doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, seventh grade, mm -hmm. we hear um, middle school is, is tough for, for kids um, of the, that age group. And, um, you know, I appreciate everything you educators are doing for the students. And we have a lot of parents that listen to this uh, podcast. So what advice would you give parents that have middle school aged students right now and are, you know, helping them get through the school years? Um, with regard to, to work, I guess, is what you, yeah. you know, maybe career path. Yeah. I would say get out and ride around. Oh, okay. Go, go around to, you know, our area, South yeah. Boston, Danville, uh, Roxborough, Henderson, Oxford, Clarksville, and, and show them, hey, this is what they do. Yeah. And maybe this is what, what you could potentially make. Yeah. Um, and all of this spills over into the other. It truly does. Yeah. From fabrication, welding, to uh, any type of the service work, electrical, you know, being able to read gauges, understanding about calibration. So, and I find myself doing that with my daughter now. Awesome. At, at six years old, we'll ride around and say, dear, they build, they do modular homes. I love that. Well, what, is, what does that mean? And, you know, of course, these kids now watch, the kids watch um, YouTube videos, yes. YouTube kids. And the things they come up with will really surprise you that they know. Like, wait a minute, we didn't know that till we were like 12 <laughs> so or 15. It's you know. so true. So. Yeah, it's important to get them out in the community and show them what there is to offer. I completely agree with you and really appreciate, you know, you just getting out here. I mean, it takes, you know, you have your summer, right? And you've yes, chosen to spend weeks of it, you know, shadowing other businesses and really finding out, uh, what we're doing in the community and what there is to offer and that just shows what kind of educator you are because you care about the students and making sure that you're showing them all the opportunities that they have and providing them the best resources. So well, thank you for I, that. I truly appreciate it and um, you know, hope to do it for many more years. Yes and uh, we look forward to continuing the relationship with you and opening our doors anytime you want to come and uh, see what Rogers is doing and you know, you got out of the truck with Josh and Josh said, you know, I think we got our next service tech right here because you did such a good job out there in the field. So we really appreciate that. And you did a great job today as a Rogers team member. Well, I really appreciate it. I yes. was you know, made to feel welcome and I actually saw uh, quite a few of my students today. Yes. So that has been very nice. That is That's awesome. Been very nice. And then you go to the customer's house, the first customer's house and you knew them. I so you just had, know everyone. I had talked to their grandson. <laughs> yep, yeah. It's your head. Small world. It is. It is. And, and we just thank you for everything. We thank the Institute for Advanced Learning for putting on the Excite program and allowing educators to come in the doors. We appreciate every business in the area that has opened their doors and thank them. And we thank Halifax County Public School System for allowing their educators to come here and all of the other school systems out there doing it. So... Thank you all, and thank you, Mr. Seat, for being with Rogers today. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone, for listening to the Rogers Radio Podcast. 
Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all of the feedback. We appreciate it. And I can't wait to talk to you next week.